Hey YouTube, today is the day I'm getting my Kubota L2501. It's about 9 a.m. and the dealer is going to be here in about an hour. The uh, shipping company is going to have the L2501 and the Land Pride brand uh, uh, land plane and rotary cutter as well and I'll just film them as they come in, but I'm really excited. I got a, a new toy, a new much needed uh, horsepower for the land. And it's gonna give me the capability of five, a crew of five guys to get a lot of stuff done that really needs to be done on this 25 acres. So this will be an exciting video. At the end of it, I'm gonna go over why I chose the Kubota and uh, stay tuned to the end and I'll give you my rundown. just received delivery of the Kubota and we're just going to go over some of the functions. Okay, Tim, of course, this is the L2501 HST, which means hydrostatic transmission, uh, four-wheel drive. First of all, when you hop aboard, get in the seat, and you can adjust the travel. Make sure you're, you're comfy and you get your legs positioned correctly. To crank the tractor up, we want to depress the clutch. Now it is a hydro, but this serves as a, there's a safety switch on it to crank it. You have to depress the clutch. Okay. All right, our ignition key is over here. We can turn the key counterclockwise. If you see an international symbol of a coal, what that is is a heater. Now typically, when you, typically even a day like today, it's kind of, it's chilly, but it's not what I would say cold. Depress the clutch and you can crank it up. Okay. Let's, let's, let's take it one step back just to make sure. And the reason I say this, on the yard, we have customers come in and they play with the levers. I'll make sure your throttles peel back to, and again, again, symbols of a tortoise and a hare. Okay. Slow and fast. Okay. This is your hand throttle. Make sure it's at, at low RPM. Okay. Press the clutch, crank it up. If it doesn't crank immediately, turn the key counterclockwise just to make you aware. This is a glow. Glow, this, this, glow, glow. Will, okay. Exactly. All right. Once the tractor's running, I let it warm up for a few minutes, let it pick up some oil. This lever here is it's a three-speed speed hydro. Now, I, I would probably leave it in medium unless you're going to transport it from point A to point B across. Say if you're going to go to your mailbox, you may want to pick up the speed. And if you're going to pull an implement, I would probably start out at low and kind of get a feel of how the okay. tractor responds. You can tell if the RPM starts, if it pulls it down, you can adjust your speed accordingly. Okay. Um, all right. The treadle pedal. You can see the pedal, you see the arrow. Of course, forward and reverse. Now, for some reason, if you get on and you've got the, the clutch, if you've got this pedal depressed and she will not crank make sure you don't have your foot just lying on this either way okay. because there's also a switch that has to be in neutral okay okay your your brakes 
you have two brakes. You have a left and a right side. I would leave this little tab. You can actually separate them and they're offset so you can feel with your foot okay. if this is the outside or this. In other words, that's the right, this is the left. Okay. And what you would use that for if you decide to do a little garden there and you want to turn it around on a dime okay. and spin it around. Mm -hmm. But typically, let me get up here, I would leave these positioned together. So in other words, if you're traveling, say you're traveling in, in, in the high range and you hit the brakes, if they're not together, whichever one you step on, it's going to pull in that direction. Okay. So keep those together. All right. To set the parking brake, while we're on the brake, topic of the brake, to press the pedals firmly. See this little tab right there? Yep. And this, there's a symbol of park. Push it forward, hold it, release, the brake set. To release the brake, that's how that works. Okay. Um, the hand throttle, I'll let you be the judge of the RPMs you wanna, wanna utilize. That'll okay. depend on what you're doing with it. Right. Uh, but before I start the um, the PTO, I should have it in lowest RPM first. Exactly. Then I would, after it's engaged. Then, anytime you yeah. start the machine, period, even with the PTO. I mean, I, uh, any, I, anytime. And once you get the PTO, okay, we're here with the cutter. We have mm -hmm. the cutter hooked up. We're going to do a little bush hogging. Or right. rotary cutting. Mm -hmm. Press the clutch, crank it up, let the, let the engine pick up a little warm up for a few minutes. Then we start the PTO at low RPM. Of course, we've got it up off the ground some. We don't want any kind of obstruction or any, we want right. to get it, get it going. Here's your PTO. Okay. So you can see the symbol of the, the arrow, the PTO is engaged or turning. Right. And that's stationary. In other words, okay. it's disengaged. Okay. So remember, clutch in. Clutch in. Here, engage the PTO. And you may just, uh, well, actually, I just started. Yeah, with ease low, low RPM. I mean, don't dump it. Just ease out on the ease clutch. Up. That'll get it. Get the momentum going. Mm -hmm. And as it as it as it levels out, pull your hand throttle down. See the tack, and you see the yellow PTO. It's a 540 PTO. Yep. You want to run that needle somewhere somewhere. You don't have to put it right on the the 2000 mark, but somewhere close. Okay. And then go about your business. Got and it. And then you can adjust depending on what your, the material you're cutting, mm -hmm. how high, how thick what have you okay you want to shift numbers you can use the low or the medium depending on you know and that's just something that's a judgment call. okay if it's just, starting low just pull it down low and take your time if it's not okay. cutting just pull it down low and take your time if it's something you can kind of blow on over and you want to get on with it mm -hmm. put it in medium okay typically i don't think you're going to do a whole lot in the h in the high range okay. unless it's just going from point a to point b got it across the the property okay um this is your height. This is what you call the, this adjusts the lower links or, or the lift. They're known as a lift. Okay. This lever here, All you right. pull it back, it raises your implement up. Okay. You push it down, it lowers it. Okay. Now there's a little tab here yep. and it's hard to turn and there's a reason for that. You loosen it up, you can slide up here. Say if you're cutting and this lever's, you like it at about three. Got it. You can loosen this up and bring it up here. Then you don't have to look down. If you want to raise it up, you just go till it stops. Okay. Instead right. of trying to figure out. Depending on the application. Right, yep. on the application, right. All right. Okay, one more thing. Mm -hmm. If for some reason the tractor won't crank, and I've had this happen, mm -hmm. remember we've got a switch here. We want to make sure that our foot's not. Foot's off of that. Yeah, yep. make sure it's off of that. That's in neutral, this is neutral. Make sure this is not disengaged because of the switch here too. Oh, okay. It won't crank unless this is disengaged. Okay, got it. Okay. So While I'm over this area, drink holder. Very okay. important. Yeah. Foldable right. rops. I would leave them alone unless you just absolutely have to use this tractor in an area where you've got some decorative trees. I just I think of Bradford prayers are kind of fragile. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes folks have yeah, a yeah. mind and, yeah. and they have to get up under them and it breaks off lens. But leave this alone. Okay. But it does have a foldable rock. So I can we, get it in the garage. You don't, okay. I don't think you have to worry about getting in the garage. I'm sure your garage is, has plenty of height. But if for some reason, yeah. if you go in there, ease up and just look and see what kind of clearance you have. Yep. But you can fold this rock now. Okay. It's a matter of pulling. It's kind of tough because, see, it's threaded. Yep. And it's new, and you have to get either a, let's see. Oh, okay, grill guard. That protects your, your front end from when you're using a loader, if you're, you're, if you're gonna load a truck and you're mm -hmm. looking up the bucket and you get too close, that's gonna hit first. That'll Got protect it. Your, yep. All right, to, to, we're gonna raise the hood now, okay? Okay. Keep in mind the spring-loaded pin, pull it, and then pull your grill guard. That'll give us clearance for our, to raise our hood. Okay. The, the latch is on, if you're sitting on the machine, it's going to be on the left-hand side, up front. 
you can feel with your index finger. It's a little ring. I don't know if you can see. Okay. Kind of right there. Yep. I pull. Got it. And I usually just kind of assist it here. I mean, it'll. Yeah. It has a gas. Just so it doesn't yep. yeah, spring up. Okay. This is very important. Now, you'll have to. You'll have to work with it or probably raising your loader up, but see, we've got this on each side. I don't know if you see it. Try to stay out of the grease. Well, here, right there. Yep. So in other words, if I were Both to take sides. out, yep. this, remember the screen you were talking about? Yep. You know about this. Yes, I know that. Keep that <coughs> blown out. Keep it clear. Because okay. it, it, every time, depending on if you do a lot of bush hogging, you may get some grass clippings, oh, some yeah. dust, some yeah. chafe. And make sure that's not restricted because the the way that fan is designed, it pulls air through here, and then, of course, this catches, hopefully, any debris, okay. and through the radiator. Okay. It's right there. You see how that, yeah. see? It well, has a little ball bearing. You can slide it over your PTO shaft. Do okay. this with the engine off. Got you. Oh, yeah. I, I know. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> Look at that, yeah. Tim, Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Once you get this on here, now, they have adjust your... your uh, your stabilizers, their turnbuckles, uh -huh. and you, once you get on there, you can adjust those out. Try to center it with, with the tires, whatever implement. Got it. You can tighten them or loosen them. If you want a little bit okay. of slop or a little bit of play, yeah, for that'd be a better term. Then you can set how you want it. Okay. Most time you don't want it real rigid. Mm -hmm. You want it, yeah. yeah to, but you can you can set these. And that's a lock nut there. Yeah. Okay. Most time you just <clears throat> you don't have to lock it down. You can just run that nut up there and. Okay. All right, this is your top link. Now okay. you have to adjust it in or out. Okay. Depending on what implement. Got it. Uh, that's your hydraulic oil fill just to give you, you know, probably okay. never have to put any in it. But. Okay. <clears throat> and this, I don't know, this may be up. This, no, this is, they keep it tight. Once it's, once you, it give, you can raise it up to give you room to get in there to the PTO shaft and then just push it down. It's just to cover okay. a cigar, this is all it is. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking about getting some quick attach, you know, Pat's quick attach, and then sure, sure. probably another aftermarket uh, stabilizer. Now, yeah. I'm just happy. I appreciate your business, but I'm oh, happy yeah. you got a Kubota. Yeah, Whether yeah. you got it for me, I mean, I'm glad you got it for me, yep. but I just, I'm glad, I think you just, you got a, it's a good investment. It definitely is. Okay, on this cutter, I've got manuals again for the cutter, the uh, grading scraper that's coming, the tractor, and the loader. <coughs> and I'm sorry, this damp weather. I've got oh, yeah. Okay, this is your gearbox. This thing is warranted for one year, along okay. with the, anything lamp prize, one year. Okay. The gearbox has a three year warranty. Now, you see these little tabs right here. This is a this is a shear bolt. That's your weakest link. There's a bolt in there. Yeah. Half inch bolt, I think it's three and a half inches long. It's in the book. Okay. Grade, grade three, I've been told grade five is good. Don't go beyond that. It's got to have a weak link. Yep. Hit something hard, yeah. you want that bolt to shear. Right. Tap that puppy out with a yeah. hammer, and a, it might be something you put here in there. Mm -hmm. Long enough punch, slide you another one in. Where's the? Where is it again? Okay. It's inside, but. Let's see. If oh, I okay. So that's like a rubber. Yeah. I don't like to move these a whole lot, but you can pop these. You got one on each side where you can drive stuff through. But anyway, that's if you have a. Um, the manual will have that. Yeah. So I'll I'll just so here's check what that I would out. do. How, I don't know how well you know the property, but if you're going to do some bush hogging, you may walk it first. Or if Yeah, this has been brush hogged for many years. Oh, well, you're in good shape. So yeah. we're, we're good, yeah. As long as you know, because yeah. you know, what happens is the customer gets the tractor, he's got a new property, mm -hmm. he's never been over it. Right. Then he starts, Rocks and yeah, stumps exactly. and all kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yep. And okay. also, you can adjust, kind of, I know you will. I know you're going to be good about this. Read your manuals. There's good information in there. If you want to adjust, depending on how you want it, you can adjust. There's plenty of adjustment back here for the... For okay. The tail wheel. That's, that's the tail wheel. So this is up up the highest. It looks like. Well, it's it's not up. Oh, maybe it's not. almost. But almost. Yeah, you can let it down. And like I said, they set these up. There they we check go. them out. They check the oil and let the customer set them how they want it. Absolutely. Want. Okay. Hey YouTube. Uh, well, here we are. Uh, did a little bit of work with the Kubota. Uh, again, just got it today, and. Uh, just move some old tires around move the uh, implements over to another area and Just kind of out of the way and this is great the the 2501 fits perfectly in this parking spot in the garage This will be temporary until I get the shed built. So that's the next big project. That's going to take I don't know six months But that'll be a lot of fun 
Um, my first modification will be to put a spinner on the steering wheel and I've got that sitting over on my workbench so I'll probably go ahead and do that right after I film this. And I'm, I'm just really excited, I'm really happy with my decision and remember I said that I would uh, give you my opinion and how I went about my buying decision for a tractor and it was very difficult. Um, I started off with all the brands just looking at everything and it really ended up being more of the intangible. You know, I, I narrowed down the short list with tangibles. Uh, for example, Mahindra, I kind of cut the, that brand out pretty quickly because it just didn't seem to have the reliability and the reviews were not good and the technology wasn't, you know, uh, solid just from seeing the reviews. It just seemed to be outdated. Um, TYM seemed good. Uh, that's the, also the Rural King. Uh, but I don't have a Rural King that's close by here in the Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina. Uh, closest one is uh, about 45 minutes, maybe an hour away. So, you know, location of dealer was really important. I have a Coyote dealer that's about 15 minutes away, so that was a serious competitor and it actually came down to the Kubota and the Coyote in the very end. The Coyote uh, is South Korean, it, lo it looks like a fantastic tractor. Uh, for the price of this, I could have gotten uh, a, another 10 horsepower with all the bells and whistles on the Coyote CK3510. SE and you know I, I could have had that for this price of this. This is only 25 horsepower, the, the Coyote was 35 horsepower. I came very close, it was very close decision. I guess what I, when I say intangibles, um, I think I would have, um, I knew I would have been more happy with a Kubota just because it's the best tractor out there. Uh, you know. It just the Japanese quality is so good, uh, you know, I think that's really it. And my brother has a Kubota for 20 years now. He loves it. Um, so I, I've got a cousin that swears by John Deere. Uh, I never considered Don, John Deere just because of the plastic and it just didn't, didn't give me any good feeling as far as the quality. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think that it's came down to what would make me feel happy and joy. <laughs> so, and definitely the Kubota has done that. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, as much as I did. Uh, and hopefully you'll follow me as I do other projects. Lots of work for this little puppy here. So, signing off. Till next time.